So I'm moving and I was going through a bunch of my old paperwork. And some of this stuff I didn't even remember. I totally forgot I went to the Masonic Temple. <laughs> we'll talk about that here in a second. But it's coming up on 6 a.m. I gotta get to my appointment. To drop off a car full of grub and I'll talk about why protein is highest on the food chain because it takes about 15, 1,500 to 15,000 gallons of water and 50 to 500 pounds of grain to make one pound of beef. So, stock up on protein when it's the 11th hour. Because it's a little bit harder to keep long-term food storage in the form of protein than in grains and stuff. But because there's so much grain and water that goes into a pound of beef, so much more than goes into a pound of grain, it's like concentrate bang for your buck. If you know when the 11th hour is and you can invest in protein right at that 11th hour. The 11th hour is here. When you're 10 steps ahead of the crowd, you're a crazy person. When you're two steps ahead of the crowd, you're a visionary. You just went from crazy person to visionary. This is the Economist magazine cover from May, the month before last. And the Economist magazine cover is infamous for putting forth uh, images that need decoded by soothsayers and crystal ball seers. But they do foretell the future on these magazine covers of what's to come, like they consult with billionaires who go by astrology and the movements of humankind. This one needs no decoding. It needs no creative interpretation of the cover of The Economist magazine. So it's no longer crazy talk and conspiracy theory to talk about this stuff with your family and friends. You're getting it straight from the elite esteemed and prestigious Economist magazine cover at economist.com, but you can just Google it. And I show you these images for the purpose of trust with verification. So, you know, this guy's not just talking out his pie hole. I think I'm on my fourth car load, or actually I'm on my third car load, and then I'm going to still need one more. Best by January 2022. So this ain't out of date shit. This is all bought within the last three years. And when I told him, he says, wow, how big of a family you got? I said, I'm a single guy with no kids. I realized there's something peculiar and unusual about this donation. And there is. By the way, ever noticed that most of the truthers out there are single, male, with no kids? It's up to us to put ourselves on that front line so the guys with kids don't have to. That's a... Cost-benefit analysis we make, and a chance we take. Anyway, let's get back to how long I've been being a truther. You can see that says, get Bush out in 2004. Let's go to the Communist Party for some discussions. Yeah? The stack of the People's Weekly World, a newspaper produced by the Communist Party USA by Sam Webb and his daughter Barbara. So I've been passing these out. You'll see a lot of the dates on them are like June 2003, the AARP Bulletin. This is when I was still looking for truth. I knew the Freedom Festival, something was wrong with that because we were clear into 2009 and I knew what happened in 2001. Anyway, these are just kind of uh, nostalgic and I'll be letting them go so I thought I'd make a video of them. And when I came across this, I just remembered, I was like, oh yeah, I went to the Masonic Temple. We'll talk about that here in a sec. Fight for the four-hour day so we can work four hours instead of eight hours. Uh, the Citizen Rule Handbook, this is Alex Jones type shit. When I ordered some of his stickers or something, it came with one of these, like a constitution, pocket constitution. You better not get caught with that these days. You better stick with the, uh, the commie propaganda. So... Just to, just to show. Communist Party USA. So this was trying to get people out for the vote in 2003 and 4. The campaign, the independence, the role of the Communist Party. And... Uh, community organizing efforts. So I was pretty deep in it looking for truth or stuff from the very beginning for a very long time. 
so we can go do some uh, Congressional Progressive Caucus action. Some phone treeing and stuff. So I, I, I saw this and I had a total flashback. I was like, what the hell? Where did that come from? And then I remembered, oh yeah, I went and got it. When there was an open tour at the Masonic Temple in Salt Lake. And while they were giving these tours of different areas, you go in and one guy gives you a tour and a speech about one area of the building. Then you go to the next area of the building and they give you another tour. Another guy gives you a tour of that area of the building. And uh, at one point, this guy who was saying he was a lawyer and this and that by trade normally during the day. They let anyone raise their hand and ask questions, and I raised my hand. I said, is it true that Brigham Young and Joseph Smith were Freemasons? He says, yeah, yep, yeah, high-level, 33rd-degree Freemasons. And everyone in the room murmured, like they all turned to the next person next to them. Did you know that? I'd never heard that. Did you know that? The whole room rumbled up into a murmur. I forget what the other question I asked was, but this other guy at the end, he's like, dude, you were knocking it out of the park. I was like, yeah, yeah, hit him with another zinger. And uh, so when I asked him that, by the way, there's something about crossing this threshold. <laughs> so when I asked him that and he said, yeah, yeah, they were high level, 33rd degree Masons. It's like every person in the room didn't know that. Yet every person in the room is A, interested in Freemasonry and B, in Utah. So they have some understanding of Mormonism, whether or not they're Mormons. Yet no one knew the connection between the two on a tour in the Masonic Temple in Utah, where everyone attending that tour is probably also pretty well familiar with Mormonism. Yet none of them knew that Brigham Young and Joseph Smith were Freemasons. So speaking of Brigham Young and Joseph Smith, this is an excerpt from the Journal of Discourses, April 9th, 1852. And all of these articles I have already read on about April 18th or April 17th of, that one's Fallen Angels with Flaming Swords. 2019, just before I went to Missouri. This concept is commonly referred to as the Adam God theory. Thought I'd do us all a favor there and just stabilize the camera. When the wicked have the power to blow out the sun that it shines no more, when they have the power to bring to a conclusion the operations of the elements, suspend the whole system of nature and make a footstool of the throne of the Almighty, they may then think to check Mormonism in its course and thwart the unalterable purposes of heaven. May I direct your attention now to the lyric in Smash Mouth. Uh, Mr. Wizard can't create no god like Hocus Pocus to suspend the whole system of nature and make a footstool of the throne of the Almighty. They may... Then think to check Mormonism in its course and thwart the unalterable purposes of the heaven. Men may persecute the people who believe in it, who believe its doctrines, report and publish lies to bring tribulation upon their heads. Earth and hell may unite in one grand league against it and exert their malicious powers to the utmost, but it will stand as firm and immovable in the midst of all, in the midst of it all, as the pillars of eternity. May I insert here that there was a time in early Mormonism where every male of age was required to join a lodge. Just those pillars of eternity remind me of that. Men may persecute the prophet and those who believe and uphold and uphold him. They may drive the saints. They may drive the saints and kill them, but this does not affect the truths of Mormonism one iota, for they will stand when the elements melt with fervent heat and the heavens are wrapped up like a scroll and the solid earth is dissolved. Mormonism stands upon the eternal basis of omnipotence. Jehovah is the Mormonism of, their, uh, of this people, their priesthood and their power and all who adhere to it. In the appointed day, come up under the presence of the King eternal and receive a crown of life. This is another ep excerpt from that Mormon Journal of Discourse, which is written by Joseph Smith and Brigham Young or their uh, closest confidants. Who can, who can prove it to us? We are called ignorant. So we are. But what of it? Are not all of us ignorant? I rather think so. Who can tell us of the inhabitants of this little planet that shines in the evening called the moon? When we view its face, we may see what is termed the man in the moon, 
and what some philosophers declare are the shadows of mountains. But these sayings are very vague and amount to nothing. And when you inquire about the inhabitants of that sphere, you find that the most learned are as ignorant in regard to them as the most ignorant of their fellows. So it is with regard to the inhabitants of the sun. Do you think it is inhabited? I rather do. Do you think there is any life there? No question of it. It was not made in vain. It was made to give light to those who dwell upon it, and to others, and to other planets. And so, this, and so will this earth, when it is celestialized. Every planet in its first root organic state receives not the... And you'll have to go find the rest of that, but it talks about how eventually, in due course, every planet is celestialized to give off light like the sun. Here is what I was calling the Celestializer Master 2000, the sun simulator made by a company in Germany called Sinlight. Uh-oh. Wow, my phone just started playing a Gina Hill video in the background, and it's still got it. I just paused it. It's never done this before. Anyway, that is by the company Sinlight in Germany, and that was the world's largest sun simulator until China outdid them. These are images of UFOs coming up out of the water taken by periscopes of submarines. These are all, oh, this is about how high class is high speed in the world of the Sims. This right here. High speed is high class in the world of the M's. That's what they call them instead of Sims. It's the same thing. This is all in the videos that I uploaded right before I went to Missouri. So you can check those out if you want. One of them is titled Kolob Elohim and the Law of Eternal Transhumanism. <clears throat> but you didn't know there's a Mormon Transhumanist Association. You ought to listen to the, the, the talk there given by. So anyway, I don't know if I mentioned it already, but I was going to sneak in reference to the last video. Will you be there in the last video? Because this is the last video that will be made from this location. So let's go, some of the, go over some of this video called Burn It Down by AWOL Nation. Starts out like the people's court. Even the same music, I think. Bailiff says, will the defendant please rise? And the judge says, you're being accused of having a dirty, filthy soul. Is there anything you'd like to say to the court? Correction, a guilty, filthy soul. Starts out, if you're feeling like I'm feeling, then run your life like it's a dance floor. And if you need a little heat in your face, that's what I'm here for. And that's when the judge... Looks over to the bailiff, I'm like, uh, <coughs> what? do something here. Bailiff over there starts getting twitchy, he's gonna, he's gonna zap this guy. But his firepower is nothing compared. But it turns him into a spaceman, it doesn't just turn him into, you know, vaporize him. And then he zaps the judge, turns her into a mannequin. Sorry, I got the focus locked in now. Then he gives everyone a blast, but it transforms them more than destroys them in some cases. And then he looks over here to the bailiff and he looks down at her hands and sees she's recording everything he's saying. And he just looks down and tells her to keep writing with his eyes through telepathy, uh, silent communication <laughs> and just keeps saying, burn it down, baby, baby, burn it down. And then he zaps her. And then she appears as a mermaid on the judge's desk. I don't know, why has Jesus got a fish symbol? And are scales very different for dragons that are in water than dragons that are in the sky? Would they be distinguishable or might you just use a fish as your symbol? They do a close-up of her tail. And then he zaps these three chicks. And they turn into hotties. And they're looking at themselves saying, what, what, what the hell, what just happened? This one you can tell kind of likes her new look. And this is AWOL holding court. Then it turns into a big party with all the hotties. And then it launches into the chorus lyrics. Looking through a window made of time. Would you have the courage not to lie? Looking down the barrel of today. Would that make you turn around and stay? Looking through a window made of time, would you have the courage not to lie? 
You notice a theme here with the whole lying, uh, including uh, Smash Mouth. We come to show the world how to snuff the fires and the liars. Maybe it was a bigger deal than we made it out to be. Maybe lying isn't just uh, everyone does it kind of thing. To be taken lightly, like little white lies and stuff like that. To thine own self be true doesn't mean just stick to your guns when you've been proven wrong and someone showed you that there's something you missed or misinterpreted or where you were wrong. To thine own self be true means don't lie to yourself, and many of us have lived a lie. That's what it says at the end of the Tool 10,000 Days Wings for Marie song is, I never lived a lie, never took a life, but surely saved one. That's what it says to tell your maker. If you see your maker, look him in the eyes, tell him. I never lived a lie, I never took a life, but I surely saved one. This whole lying theme seems to be kind of a big deal. And in that song, Wings for Marie, 10,000 days in the fire is long enough, you're coming home, is the idea. But back, back to the party where they're singing about, would you have the courage not to lie? And remember, this all started in a courtroom where he's accused of having a guilty, filthy soul. So this is a type of court that is being held here that they're showing you is of a higher nature than the courtroom we're typically used to. This is the people's court of a higher order. And again, here's the cheerleaders that were hanging out the car cheering me on when I went to Independence on my hero's journey. Maybe that's why they call it the great and terrible day of the Lord, because those who get invited to the pillow party, it's pretty awesome. I am so glad that I sold my soul to the divine mother goddess and pledged my uh, allegiance to please and satisfy all of her divine feminine incarnations while I'm here on earth. Or at least that's the pickup line I would use on chicks for a long time, and maybe it meant more than I knew. This is the thumbnail cover photo for the official music video of Burning Down. And in the final scene, he does this mic drop, folds his arm, and gets zapped himself. I think in the Bible it says something about men will disappear like so much smoke. Maybe a little fire in there too. And he's gone. So, like I said about that Pledge of Allegiance, that may have meant more than I thought it did when I was just using it as a pickup line, maybe this visit that I took to the Masonic Temple meant more than I understood and still do, as the initiate must initiate themselves. They just hold an open house meeting for anyone that's curious. Just uh, come check it out if you want. And that's a very rare thing for them to do, if ever. I don't know if they've ever done it before or since, but I know it's very rare. So we'll go ahead and keep, we'll, we'll read their thing about crossing the threshold, like what happened when that snake moved in front of my path uh, uh, down, as it was moving down a path like a hallway into an opening of the main area, main living area of a uh, Navy SEAL type commando homeless dude's encampment that he made right there when I made my first video of plasma fire and I didn't know what I was about to learn but a snake crossed my path and I pulled the skin off of it we've talked about that before anyway Freemasons are the keepers of an ancient and honorable tradition designed to polish and adorn the hearts minds and spirits of men and all mankind tonight we hope to briefly open the doors of Freemasonry and share with you the history and tradition of our venerable art it is difficult to convey the scope and meaning of Freemasonry when given a lifetime. It is nearly impossible in the course of a few hours to even scratch the surface. Tonight, we will share what we can, but implore you to ask questions, be inquisitive, and to do so without restriction or hesitation and without fear or worry. Freemasonry, Freemasonry is a traditional, in attack, I-N-I-T-I-A-T-I-C, initiatic order, where you get initiated. So Freemasonry is a traditional initiatic order. It describes itself 
as a peculiar system of morals veiled in allegory and illustrated by symbols. Freemasons are joined together by shared ideals of both moral and metaphysical nature. Freemasonry's initiatory system of degrees or morality plays is designed to teach and explore ethical and philosophical lessons of three basic virtues, brotherly love, relief, and truth. These reality plays or degrees of morality uh, of initiation might actually be the initiation processes that life itself puts us through in these morality plays. Life has its own built-in initiation process, and we are in the collective initiation. So go big on your hero's journey, on, your, on these morality plays. Truth seems to be a pretty big deal here as well. And what I've shown you here is just how long I've been putting it in to be a truther. been searching for my whole life. And like Phil Collins said, I've been waiting for this moment all my life. Can you feel it coming in the air tonight? I sure can. <laughs>